All right. Now I'm going to draw my short. We ready? Okay. Okay. Let me go on my phone too. Just to make sure. We're live. But we should be live. <laughs> Season three, episode four. Yep. Which is on asbestos. So as usual, let's play a little introductory video. Okay. There's been unnecessary deaths as a result of this, and that's going to continue for a period of time to come. It is a very good building material. There's no question about it. The only problem is, is now we've discovered that it kills people. Building trades workers, construction workers, millwrights, engineers, or just production workers who happen to be around the material when it starts to disintegrate or when there's a repair being done are exposed. There was enough evidence out there decades ago to put a stop to using these products. Why they would have a mineral like that going into homes and schools and hospitals it doesn't make any sense. The hazard is in. Sounds good. Sorry. Homes and schools and hospitals. Yeah, that's actually very scary. I know. They went for the straight up shock factor there, didn't they? They really did. It was very, very dramatic in the best way, though, in the best way. So, <laughs> I have a question for you. When you were growing up, did you ever see those mesothelioma commercials? I was actually going to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I saw it when I was doing the research and I was like, Mes uh, mesothelioma. Like, it just. If you were a loved one, yeah. it impacted my mesothelioma. So, did you know when you were little that it was from asbestos? No, I did not know. I didn't know that at all. I didn't know that's what it was from or that's where it came from. I know asbestos is a thing because, like, I, I think when you move into an apartment and they give you, like, the lease papers, there's a whole section on asbestos or whatever. So, yeah. So, what I like about that video is it kind of talks about how it's a fantastic building material. Like, it's one of the best types of building material you can use. Yeah. But, unfortunately it gets into our lungs and kills us. Yeah. So what do you do? It, and what our government did was just continue to use it until enough people died that they had to stop. That's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> That's capitalism for you. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that note, I'm Mary. And I'm Macy. And we're the Home Girl. And today we're talking about asbestos. Finally, an episode about something we can see. Yeah, that's so true, because everything else has been like a gas or something that you can't smell, you can't see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, when I was writing this stuff, I was like, oh my god, we can actually... Yeah, this is something you can see. Is this a new one? Yep. As you probably imagine from our introduction, asbestos is a very tricky subject because it's a very deadly mineral, but only in certain situations. Yeah. So, don't get me wrong, asbestos will kill you. Yeah, it can kill you, but... There's certain conditions that like lead up to that. Exactly. So you have to be exposed to it in a large fashion, like a, a lot. I think yeah, it has to be a lot and like for a long period of time. Exactly. So believe it or not, you can live in a home that is insulated with asbestos, never know, and never become sick from it. Yeah. So how and why are people dying from mesothelioma? I said it wrong. Mesothelioma. I say we start with the history to figure it out. Yes, let's do it. Yeah, excited. So first, I wanted to find what asbestos is. So you've probably heard of it. We've all heard of it. We've never, most of us have probably never seen it. I've never seen it. Yeah, I've never seen it either. I definitely lived in buildings with it, but never been aware yeah. or seen it. It's a naturally occurring fibrous silicate mineral. So if you go to the blog and watch the video, it's kind of a shiny thing. Mm -hmm. You saw, you saw that. It's like yeah. a shiny rock thing. Yeah. 
But because it's a silica, it flakes. Um, have you ever seen like mica? I don't think so. It's like that flaky rock that you can like flake off. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's kind of the same idea as asbestos. It's okay. like a very easy to break down type. Okay, type so it of breaks deal. up really easily. Yeah, um, and because it's fibrous silicate mineral, it makes it very good for a, being fireproof and all insulation and paint and all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. It's really versatile, as they find out. There are six types of asbestos that they recognize, like six like subtypes of asbestos. Yeah. Um, they're all long and thin fibrous crystals. Each fiber is composed of many microscopic fibrils that can be released into the atmosphere by abrasion and other processes. And it's that fibril is what gets into your lungs. Okay. So now that we've defined it, let's move to actually where it started. Okay, cool, cool. I think you noticed this. Um, the ancient Greeks and Romans started a lot of the stuff we talked about in this season. Yeah, they really have. And that includes asbestos. Of course, okay, not surprised. I know, <laughs> I know. Um, they had found asbestos as early as 4,000 BCE. So that was 4,000 years before the common era. Remember, we're 2021 years after, so yeah. it's a pretty long time. Yeah, that is actually a really long time. They found it being used as wicks and candles. Oh my god. I know. They Even more interesting, they found ancient Egyptian pharaohs wrapped in asbestos cloth, like the mummies. Wow, I wonder what the reason for that is. Um, it's supposed to protect the body from deterioration. That's oh, what they believed anyway. Okay, that's what they thought. Yeah. At least. Okay. But apparently, I mean, it, I mean, they were mummified, so we don't really know. Was it the asbestos or was it the mummification? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Or did the asbestos help in the mummification? Yeah, know. we don't know. We don't know. So in Finland, they found pots um, dating back to 2500 BCE that were asbestos pots. And the understanding was that asbestos pots, or what archaeologists believe, is that they were using asbestos in the pots to make them more resistant to fire. Because remember, asbestos is yeah. very fire resistant. Yeah. Here comes the Greeks. This is 456 BCE, uh, Herodotus, which is a very, very famous Greek historian. And actually, did you ever see 300? Yes. That story, original story, not, not the graphic novel, yeah. but the actual <laughs> original story was written by Herodotus. Oh, yeah, So wow. there's our 300 tie-in. Okay, nice. Yeah. Nice. So um, he also refers in his writing to the use of asbestos shrouds for the dead bodies. Okay. And um, interestingly, the reason the Greeks were using the asbestos shrouds was not for mummification, but because they would burn dead bodies and the asbestos would protect the ashes from being intermingled with ashes from the fire. Oh, because okay. it's fireproof. Okay, so Isn't that wacky. So they separate like that, like. So they wrap the body in an asbestos blanket, uh -huh. blanket, and then they would put it in a fire. And then when the fire was over, the asbestos blanket probably looked a bit different, but the it, it had all the ashes in it, in it. Okay. so your ashes wouldn't get mixed with the fire. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's pretty smart. I know. Uh, the Romans use asbestos for cloths, tablecloths, and napkins. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, um, that sounds kind of scary. <laughs> um, and the reason they used it was because it's kind of like a party trick. They realized that they could throw the asbestos tablecloths and napkins into a fire to clean them because they would come out relatively unharmed. Wow. I know. That's insane. So, um, and actually, we think... The word asbestos is from the Latin amniatus, meaning unsoiled or unpolluted, because the Romans were using it to like clean. They yeah. were using fire to clean their asbestos napkins. Yeah. Wow, that's insane. I know. There's some craziness happening. Right? Here. I like, just want to point really that out. Using the most random materials for like napkins. Like... And and who figured this out? Right. <laughs> However. The Greeks and Romans also noticed something weird happening to the slaves who would produce the asbestos napkins and tablecloths. Okay, the ones who were actually making it. Yes, the not things. the ones eating off of it, yeah, but the, the ones making the asbestos tablecloths okay. and napkins. A Greek geographer named Strabo is the first one who noted what he called sickness of the lungs in the slaves who wove asbestos into cloth. 
Pliny the Elder, who is also famous for the interruption of dying in the eruption of Pompeii. You know that story, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. you, did you see ever see that movie with that guy from Game of Thrones? I just realized I'm wrestling best. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Wait, which movie? Okay, the movie he, with the guy from Game of Thrones. Yeah, he, Jon Snow, is in a movie about Pompeii. And he has like an eight pack. Oh, I think I've seen it. I think I've seen it. The movie's I think terrible. Remember. Yeah, I think I've seen it though. I Google, think I... Google Jon Snow and Pompeii. Okay, let me we see. We gotta look at his I'm abs. Pretty We're having sure. a quick, yeah, hold on. We're having a quick digression. We need to look at the abs. Yeah, I think I remember seeing this movie. Woo! -hoo! Okay. My goodness, boy. Looking fine. Absolutely fine. And yeah, I remember this. Too. I remember this. I think he was Put the only, that on the blog. <laughs> I think he was the only reason that movie was good. I, yeah, that movie sucked. But yeah, this was like some... this is what we came for to Whew. see the movie for. Yeah, unzip my jacket. <laughs> Goodness. So uh, that was a complete digression. Yeah. But anyway, Pliny the Elder. He looks great. <laughs> was not the one with the six. I mean, he could have. We don't know. We but don't his know. name is Pliny the Elder. I feel like with a name like that, yeah. I don't have six pack. <laughs> I don't know. Is that an eight pack? I don't know what that is. Uh, but it's there's nice. several packs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Pliny the Elder, uh, famous for Pompeii, also wrote of uh, something he called the disease of slaves. And um, that was he. what he meant, what he re was referring to was the slaves that worked with the asbestos okay. cloth. This is interesting. Um, the miners who were mining the asbestos wore a bladder of a goat or a lamb over their mouth to protect them from inhaling. A bladder? Yeah. Bladders are versatile. What the heck? I, wait, literally a bladder of an yeah. animal? Yeah. So I misspoke earlier. I said it was only for the slaves who worked with the, like, oh. weaving. It was also, they noticed the sickness also in the slaves who were mining, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. Because they're literally up in there. So. Yeah, they're literally up in there. Um, and miners have the worst luck. We talked about miners last time, too. I was going to tell you that. Like, miners... They really went through it. Yeah. I'm sure they're still going through it. They're like, still being going a minor is probably like a very difficult job. It's never been a good yeah, job. Yeah, you gotta put yourself in like these dangerous you gotta situations. Wear bladders. You, gotta yeah, wear bladders. you gotta wear bladders on your face. Like, what the heck? <laughs> oh, man. Now, there's another idea where the word asbestos could have come from. We have the Roman theory. Now we go to the Greek theory. The Greek had a worm called Saspestus which sounds like sassy asbestos, yeah. which means inextinguishable or unquenchable. So I'm going to give it to the Greeks. I think it's more likely the Greek word than the Roman word. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, sassy asbestos. <laughs> so do you know who Charlemagne is? You I don't. feel like I've heard the name, but I don't. He I don't was know. the first Holy Roman Emperor okay. at a time before it was cool to be a Holy Roman Emperor. Okay. He was... Uh, common error is 755. So the year 755, we got a guy named Charlemagne, which actually is French for Charles the Great. Oh. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Wow. He had recorded, they like this was so famous, he actually had it recorded, had a tablecloth made as asbestos. And the reason for that was fires happened a lot. Remember, we're in the dark ages yeah. now. Everything's burning down all the time. Mm -hmm. Something we talk about often. Yeah. And they were using... Uh, asbestos cloth for their fine things because it would survive fires. Oh, okay. Makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Um, it was also popular for um, wicks, for lamps, and stuff like that. Kind mm -hmm. of what we see being used earlier in history. Yeah. But of course, they thought they made it up because, remember, they forgot everything. Yeah, because of the dark ages. Yeah. 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 They're like, like, look at this thing I discovered. Yeah, that always makes me so mad, man, <laughs> that that happened. This is crazy. You ever heard of the Crusades? Yes. You uh, what is that video game? Crusaders? I don't know. Uh, no, no. It's like uh, he's back in time, but he's in the Crusades. Prince of Pert? No. They made a movie about it. Assassin's Creed. Oh yeah, Assassin's Creed. Yes. Yeah, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know why I got that. Yeah. Have you ever played that? I played the first one. Yeah, the very first one. Yeah. yeah. So you know all about the Crusades from Assassin's Creed. Um, might not be the most historically accurate, but you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, it's still relevant. It's still relevant. Anyway, in the year 1095, we have record of the first crusaders. There was a lot of crusades, mm -hmm. by the way. The first crusaders were throwing bags of pitch and tar over city walls that were wrapped in asbestos. Wow. Look at them. That's crazy. I know. You obviously know who Marco Polo is. Yes. 
He has a record of asbestos. Oh. I know. In wow. 1280, Marco Polo's Polio's <laughs> Marco Polo is hanging out with the Mongolians. Okay. And he records that they had a fabric which would not burn. Oh. And at oh, the time, okay. yeah, 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 it's asbestos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that now. Yeah, right? now we know From that. all the other records of fabric that does not burn, we kind of put two and two together. It has to be asbestos, yeah. So at the time, in the 1200s, they believed that asbestos came from the hair of a woolly lizard. Boom. What the? <laughs> <laughs> so Marco Polo decided to disprove this fact by traveling an or to an asbestos mine in China. Oh, okay, okay. So prove. he was really on a mission to prove that it was not. Yeah, religion. he did a lot of things, but yeah, the, you know, I don't know about this one. That's pretty yeah, interesting. that's pretty though. interesting. Marco Polo did a lot of things, but one of the things he also proved was that asbestos doesn't come from a woolly lizard. That's good. He saved those lizards' lives, probably. <laughs> I mean, I kind of wish it did. <laughs> yeah, that'd be better than you know because the environmental groups would have stopped us from using it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It wouldn't have led to this. <laughs> So, Ben Franklin, we're popping up. Okay, we're going we're with Ben Franklin closer. now. Another recorded instance of asbestos in history is Ben Franklin, who had a purse made of fireproof asbestos. A purse? He was extra. You know, you no, know Ben yeah. Franklin was he extra. He was right? extra, yeah. He, he was, was totally, totally extra. extra. I can totally see him with his giant asbestos purse. <laughs> it was not uncommon for men to carry purses yeah. at that time. He's but. like, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't set on fire or anything. <laughs> So in the 1800s, the Italian government is using asbestos um, fiber to make their money on because it doesn't burn. Oh, yeah. Okay. You see a pattern here? Yeah. Things we don't want to burn down are using asbestos. It for, yeah. In the 1850s, the Parisian fire department was wearing jackets and helmets made from asbestos. Wow. That's great. They were really putting asbestos to work. I know. So now we hit the Industrial Revolution, right? We're at the end of the 1800s, early 1900s. Manufacturing and mining exploded. And one of the things they realized is asbestos is so great at um, preventing fires. Why don't we just mix it into everything? That sounds horrible. Everything. <laughs> so they start using asbestos in steam engines, turbines, boilers, ovens, electric generators. Oh my they use goodness. it in paint, they use it in wallpaper, they use it in insulation, they use it as a building material, wow. they use it in roads. They used it everywhere. They, they used, used it in clothes. But it was mostly, I guess, just to, for, fi the for fire, fire resistant things. Yeah. Is really what You're sold like, on that. Just like in that video, they're like, it's one of the best types of building material. Yeah. But, but the people who make it, suffer from that. They yeah. suffer. There yeah. are consequences. So, um, we don't actually know, remember I said there were six types of asbestos, right? Yeah. We don't actually know through history what those ancient, what type of asbestos those ancients were oh, using. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. We don't I'm know. sure it's like evolved over time. Yeah. They were using one of the six. Yeah. So like the Romans could have been using different ones than the Greeks and the Chinese could have been using a different one than the Romans. Yeah. Because they're all over the world, right? Yeah. So, um, in the 19th century, which is the 1800s, they really start to, like, categorize the asbestos. Okay. Um, South Africa is known for blue asbestos. Oh. Yeah, which is not the stuff that Breaking Bad was about. Oh, yeah. Not, <laughs> not the same. Yeah, yeah, not, not, the, the, same. not the same thing. Um, white asbestos is coming from Quebec. And it is the Canadians who, in the 1800s, really start making a lot of money by drilling in big asbestos mines. Okay, so the, okay, the Canadians. Yes, the Canadians, which is interesting, and you'll probably, you might talk about this, um, because the most asbestos exposure and death is coming from North America, a mixture of Canada and the United States. Wow. And it's because Canada does have so many... Asbestos was like such a great source. Yeah, of yeah. Asbestos. In the mines, yeah. I'm guessing, yeah. It's wow. a mineral, right? Yeah. So whatever form Canada was full of asbestos. Yeah, they must have a lot. Wow. Yeah. So um, it is the Canadian asbestos, which is the white asbestos, that is found in more than ninety-five percent of all asbestos products. So, wow. like I said, okay. it's, it's really it's why you see most of the death and sickness coming out of North America. Okay. Um, however, in the eighteen hundreds. Everyone jumps in the asbestos train. So you have the Scottish, the Germans, and the English all mining. The 
Italians have an asbestos mine. The Australians. Gee, yeah. I mean, they want to make they, money. So. It, <laughs> uh, brown asbestos is found also in um, South Africa. So South Africa has blue and brown. Okay. Um, they also start sinking um, asbestos mines in Zimbabwe, which is was called would have been called Rhodesia at the time. Oh, okay. But in different parts of yeah. Africa, is basically what I'm saying. So these miners were doing it by hand. Um, in the 1800s, before oh, okay. yeah, before mining was mechanized. Okay. So by yeah. the early 1900s, mining is mechanized. So you can imagine um, those miners who yeah. were doing it all by hand were just getting the full force of asbestos. Yeah, because they're like day. physically in there. They're like, like chipping away at it. with a pit. And also by the 1900s, asbestos production is averaged 30,000 tons annually. Wow, that is a lot. I know. Jesus. And children and women were also involved in the asbestos industry as they um, were the ones that spun Oof. and uh, manufactured the asbestos products. Oh, no. Yeah. So the men, it was mostly men in the mines, and then in the fact, asbestos factories, it was women and children. Yeah, making the cloth and the napkins and all that stuff. Yes. Um, so it's a pretty big deal. There is kind of an anecdotal story. A man named Henry Ward Johns. He founded the first big American asbestos company okay. in 1858. Uh, he made a ton of money. He was very successful for 40 years before he died um, of what they called dust pneumonia. Mm. But we know what it was. Mmm, dust pneumonia. Yep. That really came back to bite him. <laughs> yeah, it really did. So, um, meanwhile, things go on and on. It is now the 60s and 70s. Okay. And asbestos is still being mined widely. In fact, the last asbestos mine, you're not going to believe this, was located in California, and it closed in 2002. Wow. That's yeah. not that long ago. So that's asbestos crazy. goes from 4,000 BCE to 2002. Jesus. That is a really long time. I know. So we get the first um, actual written medical record. Not just anecdotal evidence by Greeks and Romans. Yeah, but saying, like what they were saying yeah, about the people in the mine. The first written record of asbestos, the dangers of asbestos, comes in 1897. That's a really long time. Yeah, and it's an Austrian doctor who noticed that his, there was a connection between his patients that had been exposed to asbestos and their, their lungs being damaged. Okay. There was a report released in 1898 um, in England, notice, noticing that a connection between people who worked in the asbestos industry and widespread, this is a quote, widespread damage and injury of the lungs due to the dusty surroundings of the asbestos mill. Wow. 1906 is the first time asbestos was marked on a death certificate. So that's the first time they actually started documenting it. Yeah, 1906. So they noticed in 1897, or like they made a medical connection in yeah. 1897. And like I said, the Greeks and Romans kind of figured it out, but yeah. they're not really writing down. Yeah, all, yeah, it wasn't documented. So. They, they called it the disease of slaves, which shows that they weren't really concerned yeah, about that's it. Yeah, that's so messed up. <laughs> that's very messed up. So, well, 1897 is the first like medical, like, hey, something's going on. Okay. It's 1906. It's the first time asbestos is on a death certificate yeah so we don't even know how many people have actually died from asbestos like it's a, well, probably way more than what's actually been documented that's yes insane. i mean this is thousands and yeah. thousands of years yeah that's crazy um this is a he was an english gentleman who died he was 33 years old which is really young yeah that um, is pretty young they did an autopsy on him to you know mm -hmm. why would this 33 year old otherwise healthy man die and found asbestos just filling in his lungs. Like, wow. Really, his, his lungs were just full of asbestos. That's insane. I know. <laughs> and at that point, the reports just start flooding in. So Italy and France um, and the United States starts basically making a tally. Okay. Um, they and, finally put two and two together. Yeah. So they start making a tally of asbestos workers who were dying young. Yeah. In 1908... This is such an American thing. Insurance companies in the United States started decreasing coverage and benefits while increasing pre uh, premiums for workers employed in the asbestos industry. So that's in 1908 that insurance has been victimizing us 
in this country. That is horrible. Healthcare is horrible. Since 1908, that folks, is a long time. Over 100 years, we have been victimized. Yeah, it's like, it makes me so sad because, like, people are sick and they can't even afford to get better just because healthcare. Sucks. To me, that's like the darkest part of the story. That is so dark. And, and they were like, they oh, realize a lot of people are dying, so like, oh, let's make it expensive for them. Yeah, we don't want any, we don't want to cover these people who are dying because they have to provide for their families. Yeah, like, that is so messed up. It's so messed up. However, money was being made. We're talking about capitalism here. Yeah, because they're making money off of this, and it's like, you're going to charge this for, like... But then they stopped them. They yeah. didn't care. In 1910, we have the highest recorded um, asbestos production. So, in 1908, 1906, they know. 1908, oh they, inc they increased the premiums and decreased the coverage. In 1910, they make the highest yield ever at 190,000 metric tons oh, that is of asbestos. Awful. Yeah. That makes me so angry. <laughs> I know. Um, and the reason was asbestos was cheap, it was easy to mass produce, and it was fireproof. So it was yeah. a dream building material. And in the 1900s, the United States is booming. You know, yeah. they want to build as fast and efficient as possible. So they're going to use asbestos. One more uh, reason why we have so much asbestos exposure in or death in North America yeah. is the United States was the world leader in asbestos construction. Of course. With Canada being in second place. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, it was probably like, it was more accessible here. I guess. Like you said. Yeah. And, and World War II disrupt a lot of the economies where it was being fought. So those mines in Europe and in Africa where battles were being fought had closed. Yeah, so they weren't producing it as much. Okay. Exactly. Well, the mines in Canada and North and United States could stay open yeah. because we didn't have an active war on yeah. our, our, you know, land. Yeah. So um, you have World War II is also kind of a flipping point where production is continued um by 1942, which is just one year into the war for the United States, mm -hmm. and, um, we are making 60% of the, or we're mining 60% of the world's asbestos. That's crazy. Yeah. That is more than half of the whole world. Like, And as a result, because the United States military is using all this asbestos, there is a high rate of World War II veterans who die of mesothelioma. Yes. It's, it's kind of a tongue twister saying that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't really have an ending to this story, yeah. other than that eventually they, um, they realize that it's bad. There is, they don't really do a ban until 2003. That took way too long. I know. And the use of asbestos peaked in 1973. What? At 804,000 tons. That is a lot. I think, I don't know if I said that right, but yeah. Eight zero four zero 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 tons. That's insane. Yeah. So it's not until two thousand three that it's a full impartial ban in seventeen countries. So that means it's still not completely banned in, yeah. in the world. That's only seventeen countries. Yeah, there's tons more. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. I know. So I have a list of other things that have asbestos in it. Okay, cool. Uh, cement, insulation for electric wiring, roofs and floors. Thermal insulation for homes and offices, automotive and airplane clutches, like the clutch, how we used to have standard cars. Oh, okay. okay. Um, millboard and paper for electrical panel, um, acid resistant gaskets and packing material, fillers and reinforcement for plasters, caulk, and paint, fire retardant coating for steel girders and buildings, which brings us to 9 11. Which are, are you going to talk about that? I was just going to mention about it, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, easy, so we'll kind of go more into this, but I want to emphasize fire retardant coating for steel girders and buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, car, truck, and airplane, brake pads, lining, seals, and gaskets. So it was really used. Yeah, they were really, I mean, I mean even back then they were using it in napkins. Like, in napkins, insane. clothes, everywhere. Shoes, anything that could be fireproof. Yeah, wow. Um, and they knew... They knew it was killing the people who were manufacturing it. That's what's even more messed up. Like, you know that you're literally putting people's lives in danger, and you're okay with it because money. Yep. So, 
in 2003, we have 17 countries. Um, and I actually missed a note here. In 2005, asbestos is banned in the European Union. Wow. I want to mention, of the 17 countries that did a full or partial ban, the United States is not one of them. Yeah, there's yeah, there's still no, no ban. There's still no ban on asbestos in the United States. Um, there was a 1989 ruling by the EPA that banned most asbestos-containing products, but that is not everything. Yeah. That is mostly products used for how residential and household goods like toys okay. and playground equipment and stuff like that. Um, there's been a lot of class action lawsuits for mesothelioma. Yes, like those commercials. Yes. If, I'm sure like if you're listening, you have seen a mesothelioma commercial like Yes. <laughs> I have seen one. I, I remember seeing them like as a kid. So, And as I mentioned already, I'll say it again, the, the last asbestos mine was in the United States and it closed in 2002. Yeah, but I'm sure they're still using it. It's still not banned. Mm -hmm. Still it's not still, banned. It's still going around. So it's that cool. is the dark story of asbestos. That is a very dark story, especially because it's like there's not even a conclusion to that. Like they're still making it probably, you know, it's still allowed in certain products and stuff. That's scary. That means <laughs> someone somewhere is still being actively exposed. Exactly, exactly. And so I think I'm going to hand it to you. You want to tell us what happens when you're exposed to yes. asbestos? Yes, so I'll talk a little bit more about asbestos and how it affects your health, which is not good. I mean, none, none of the things we talked about have been good. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, Mary. I do want to make a oh, note. Yes, yes. It's only, I want to reiterate before you start freaking yeah. out about the insulation in your house. Um, it's only really bad if you inhale it for a long yeah, period of time. Yeah, it has to be a long period of time. If it's just like one time, like nothing's going to happen to you. Most but also likely. a massive amount. Yeah, it has to be in a big amount and for a long period of time. So there's certain circumstances that have to be met for it to affect you with mesothelioma or whatever it is. Yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah. no, you're good, you're good. So Mary talked about this a little bit earlier, but asbestos is a group of six natural mineral fibers. And these fibers are known for their strength and fire and chemical resistant properties. And because of these qualities, manufacturing and building industries have used it for like cement, plastics, insulation, fireproof, fireproof buildings, textiles, military vehicles, and also to absorb sound, apparently. Oh, absorb yeah, that makes sense. Really well. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. So while these qualities make asbestos very useful, they also make asbestos exposure highly toxic. So asbestos is an effective insulator that can be used in things like cloth, paper, cement, plastic, and other materials to make them stronger. But when asbestos dust is inhaled or ingested, mineral fibers can become permanently trapped in the body. So if you inhale it, it's never coming out. Oh, so you can't cough it up. Yeah, you can't cough it up. It stays in there forever. Are you going to describe what it does to the lungs? Um, I think so, a little bit, yeah. Okay. So, um, over decades, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> over decades, now, yeah, trapped asbestos can cause inflammation, scarring, and eventually genetic damage. A rare and aggressive cancer called mesothelioma mm -hmm. is almost exclusively caused by asbestos exposure. That's crazy. Yeah, so mesothelioma is pretty much just because of asbestos. And the, uh, the Greeks and Romans were calling it the disease of slaves. Yep. Yeah, which is very sad because it's like they weren't the ones working, doing all the work, putting in all the work, so it didn't affect them. It's really sad. So how does asbestos affect your health? Asbestos fibers are not harmful unless they are released into the air. When they are released, the fibers are broken down into tiny little particles, and the particles become airborne, and then we inhale them. Then they collect in your lungs, causing uh, scarring and inflammation. So who is at risk of asbestos exposure? Everyone has some level of asbestos exposure, so I'm sure we've all might have been exposed to it once in our life, but um, there are very low levels of asbestos in the air, water, and soil, and these levels are low enough that they won't make anybody sick, so it's not enough for it to like, because like I said, it collects in your lungs. If it's like a tiny amount, it's not going to be enough to cause the scarring or the inflammation. And I'm going to talk about that more in my section when we talk about residential asbestos, Yeah, what yeah. you need to worry about. And so people, who, like we talked about earlier, people who have, who have 
Sorry. People who have worked directly with asbestos have the highest risk of developing asbestos-related diseases. The longer the exposure, the higher the risk. Now, how common is asbestos-related disease? According to the National Cancer Institute, millions of Americans have had asbestos exposure since the 1940s. I feel like it's been longer than that, though. Oh, yes. They, they, we, that's we just discussed. Yeah. That's just the United States story, and they're sticking to yeah, it. Yeah, so around 3,000 Americans receive a mesothelioma diagnosis every single year. What? 3,000 people every year. That's crazy. It's still that high. Yeah, like that is that is a big amount. Like I mean, compared to the billions of people that live in America, it's small. But like three thousand people, that's a lot of people for but, something that should yeah, be used like, anymore. Put all those people in a room, like that is a lot of people. I'm gonna Google if there's still an asbestos factory in the United States. Okay, yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can continue. So about ninety percent of mesothelioma cases are due to asbestos exposure. So only ten percent are unrelated. But, the asbestos exposure so they use just bad luck? I'm guessing. Well, there's another thing I get to worry about now. Does it, well, mesothelioma is pretty much just like a lung cancer. Yes, but it's really, it's so rare. Yeah. What the, why does Google do this? I know, the little the pictures. picture of a man clutching his chest. I know. I'm reading about it. Hold on, let me see this. So, okay. Mesothelioma, a tumor of the tissue that lines the lung, stomach, heart, and other organs. Doesn't really tell you much. It's it's a apparently it's the most common form, uh, usually affecting the lungs, a cough. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't say much really. It doesn't say who else is getting it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, of all the conditions caused by asbestos, asbestos-related lung cancer causes the most deaths, followed by mesothelioma. So what are the symptoms of these asbestos-related diseases? You may have no symptoms until years after exposure. So it takes a really long time till it really affects you. That explains why veterans are coming down. Like yeah, that. and I'm sure that's also why they didn't know exactly the reason why people were getting like mesothelioma. Oh, they knew. Yeah, I'm sure, well, they some knew. people knew, you know, but yeah. At least that one English <laughs> doctor knew. Yeah. <laughs> um, apparently you might not have sim symptoms for as long as 10 to 40 years. Yeah, after that exposure. sounds about right. Yeah, 40 years. Like, by then I wouldn't even remember. Like, <laughs> so the symptoms that you can get from mesothelioma or asbestos-related disease diseases are shortness of breath, development of a cough or a change in cough patterns, blood in the fluid coughed up from the lungs, pain in the chest or the abdomen, difficulty in swallowing or prolonged hoarseness, significant weight, weight loss, neck or face swelling, loss of appetite, and fatigue. So yeah, and then what we were going to talk about 9-11 is, well, obviously we know what happened during 9-11, and she, she mentioned how asbestos was like in buildings and stuff. So, fireproof to fireproof buildings. Yeah. First of all, it does, I guess it doesn't work when jet fuel hits a building. Yeah. I mean, I guess... My understanding was that the jet fuel caused the girders to melt, like the the burn rate yeah. was too high, and yeah. that's what caused the building to collapse. Yeah. So in those buildings, the girders would have been coated with asbestos, mm -hmm. as well as the insulation. Yeah, yeah. So when it went down, all of that came out into the air, and people were breathing it in. So, yeah. It's really sad. So a lot of 9-11... Um, first responders and survivors have died of cancer. Mm -hmm. Not just mesothelioma, but there were a lot of toxic chemicals that were actually yeah, released. Yeah. Not sure, just asbestos Yeah, it wasn't either. just asbestos, there were other things, so. Uh, that smoke cloud that came down and mm -hmm. like spread through Manhattan, uh, that was an extremely toxic smoke yeah, cloud. And I'm sure it was. That was led to the very high rate of asbestos yeah. exposure. Well, yeah, that's my little spiel on asbestos and how it affects you. The main thing is really the lungs and mesothelioma. Lung, yeah. It's not as, because I feel like the other things we have talked about, there was several things that could go wrong and several like different diseases or cancers that you could get. But this one's really just lung cancer or mesothelioma. So I am trying to look up to see if um, there's any factories left in the United States mm -hmm. that's dealing with house asbestos and I can't find any. It says that uh, most of the workers were exposed to asbestos in the raw form when they received bulk shipments and worked with the fibers into cell worked making the fibers into sellable materials. Okay. 
such as um, drywall or you know tools mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, so they did a study. The EPA did a study of how people believe they were exposed to asbestos. Um, here's six examples. Okay. One office worker did not directly handle any asbestos, but often walked through the manufacturing area to check on operations. Wow, just by walking through. Two other clerical workers did not work with asbestos, but became ill from the high concentration of asbestos in the air in their office. Oh my god. A foreman spent 40 years handling repairs and general maintenance at the plant. A, a machinist spent a single year at the plant tending to the production equipment. Just one year. Yes. A work leader oversaw a team of employees in a department that dealt with asbestos. And finally, another final example is a machinery operator spent two decades overseeing the use of the factory's heavy production equipment. Oh, yeah. Two decades. That's a long time. Yeah. Wow. It's really interesting because, you know, I've heard the word mesothelioma, mesothelioma all the time, but I never knew, like, how you got it or what it even actually was. Like, mm -hmm. I just heard, oh, mesothelioma, whatever, <laughs> you know? Which leads us to the house. Yes. Right? Yes. Now we're going to talk about how it affects the home. So a lot of us live with asbestos every day and don't even know it. Yep. Like I said, when like when you move into an apartment, they send you the all the, whatever they're called, addendum. The addendum. Yeah, the health addendum. And there's... One about asbestos, I'm pretty sure. Have you had to sign the lead paint? Addendum? Yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So every apartment I lived in uh, also had that mm -hmm. as well. And that's because a lot of apartment buildings are older. Yeah. From the 80s. Really Here are. in Houston, they'd be from the 80s. In D.C., a lot of them were from the 70s or the 60s. Yeah, that's a really long time. Um, and even older homes. So my home was built in 2017. I have no asbestos. They are not using asbestos oh, yeah. in modern building material for residential properties. And that's great. Yes. <laughs> that's great. If you live in a home from the 80s on down, you probably have some form of asbestos insulation in your walls. Yeah. The most prominent type of asbestos insulation we're seeing is used for insulation behind mirrored panels. So have you ever been in a home from like the 70s that has those mirrored walls in the dining room? Have you ever seen that? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's pretty common in older homes to have. It was very, it was very uh, stylish at one time to have a mirrored wall. Okay. And those mirrored walls were typically lined with asbestos insulation. Okay. That was considered the best way to support. So mirrored walls, you mean literally like a, a mirror? Like, on a this, wall? like behind us, this would be a floor to ceiling okay. mirror. Okay, I know what you're talking about. You, you know, know what I'm talking about, about yeah, right? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. So that's the most common place you're going to find asbestos in residential homes. Wow, that's interesting. In a really old home, like if you're living in a home from the 40s or like Victorian era home, you might actually have a, fully, a house fully insulated with asbestos. That's scary. Yeah, yeah. except it's not. Well, yeah, because it's in the walls. Exactly, which leads me to my biggest point. As long as you don't disturb the asbestos, it won't hurt you. Yeah, because it's just sitting in one area. So it's, it's contained. Like, yeah, it's not released into your air. But what happens if you're Chip and Joanna Gaines and you're breaking down walls? Then there's a problem. So have you ever seen, you know, watch Fixer Upper? I know of it. I, I don't think I've, I've watched it like that. But I know who Chip and Joanna Gaines yeah, are. Yeah, everyone know. does. I mean, like, they're more famous than God at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, you ever noticed, I don't know if you've ever watched it, or any of you listening have ever watched it, they wear like respirators sometimes oh, okay. when they break down the walls. That's because a lot of those old homes had asbestos insulation. Oh, okay. So if you are going to redo your house and you're living in an older home, mm -hmm. wear a respirator if you're doing the demo yourself. Yeah, yeah. And get the ductwork cleaned after you're done with all the work, get the ductwork cleaned. Yeah, because I'm sure when you knock down the walls, it's, it's just all going, going up into your ductwork. Yeah. Yep. Because asbestos is only harmful, harm, harmful, harmful to us if. You breathe it in. If you breathe it in. Mm -hmm. So you can live your whole life in this asbestos home and never even know, never get the mesothelioma. Yeah. I'm not going to say you're not going to die of something else. Yeah, we don't know. You might get the pesticides, the carbon <laughs> dioxide, yeah. um, whatever the other thing is we talked about. My brain is fried. <laughs> I know, we do. I'm like, what? <laughs> that, other, that other topic we talked about. Um, He's just going to look it up real quick. Shame on uh, us. Uh, radon. <laughs> radon. <laughs> radon, yeah. We don't need to radon. worry about radon. Yeah. We live in Texas. Radon, we, live in yeah, Texas. Yeah. We, we don't worry about radon. Here. I'm not saying those other three things aren't going to kill you. Yeah. But yeah. the asbestos 
is not going to kill you as long as you leave it alone. Yeah, as long as you're not breaking down walls and doing some crazy stuff inside your house. <laughs> what if you're really worried about it, though? You're really worried about it. There are such things as asbestos inspectors. And in the, in the state of Texas, they fall under the Texas Department of Health and Human Services. Okay. They are not home inspectors. So I want to make a blanket statement for the entire United States. Your home inspector is not going to inspect for asbestos ever. So that's a whole separate... Whole separate thing okay. in the entire United States. Now, your asbestos, your asbestos, your home inspector could say, like, hey, your home is from the state, you have a mirrored wall, you probably have asbestos in the walls. Yeah, they can maybe make a recommendation. They can make, they can, like, verbally tell you that if you're going to do any type of renovation, wear a ventilator. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not their job. Yeah. So do not blame your home inspector if there's asbestos. Yeah, that's not what they're like looking out for, really. Yeah, that is not a purview of their standards and practices. Yeah. So there is a such thing as um, asbestos inspectors. Um, and there's also such thing as asbestos abatement specialist, <laughs> which means that they go in and clean out the house oh, okay. for you. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. But like I said, really, really just don't worry about it unless you're breaking down walls. Yeah. I wouldn't even worry about it if you're drilling a hole in a wall to, like, hang a picture. Yeah, because like I said, like, you have to be exposed for a long time. It has to be just building up and building up and building up. And that's why you want to clean out your ductwork. Yeah. Because you don't want it hanging around. Yeah, because then you're just breathing it constantly. Yeah. We don't want that. So to reiterate, for anyone who's panicking now, ECs, when do we need to worry about asbestos in our house? Only if you're breaking down walls. Yes. Yes. And that's that. Yeah, it's not, honestly, I feel like this is the least scariest one. I agree. And one, but yet people are the most worried about it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like they make it seem scary. Like, and when I read that in the addendum, I'm like, oh my God, I never want to make a, even a hole in my wall. Like, exactly. Because it's, it, they make it seem like a big deal. But it's really not unless you're constantly inhaling it. And really, like we talked about, the people who are really affected are people who work in the factories or people who are making the cloths. And, like, or miners. Like or miners. Like, it wasn't like someone just hanging out in their house who never worked in that, in that area, field. yeah, in that field. It's sad. I mean, it's really sad, especially because there is obvious some sort of government cover-up happening. Yeah, because obviously, like, they knew what was going on, but they didn't money care. is money. Money speaks, baby. Yeah, so they want to keep making money. They're not going to shut down their whole business because... But also, know. those asbestos barons seem to have all died, so they got their just desserts in the end. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The guy who was making the most money off it, look what happened. He ended up dying for the same thing. Yeah. So, mm. so it came, it came back it to came for him. But <laughs> asbestos wakes up every day and chooses violence. Yeah, yeah, but it just sucks because like people need to make money, and sometimes like this is the only job they can get. Yeah. Now I'm gonna bring food to the table. You know, they're not gonna leave. It's terrible. Yeah. And they were being. It was still, to me, it was almost still slavery. Like, they were doing something that was Yeah, going to and then, like, the whole new was going to Yeah, happen. like, the whole, like, in, when was it, 1908, they raised the premiums and, like, stuff like that. That's ridiculous to yeah. me. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, it's like, you don't have any concern for human life. And know? the Romans and the Greeks were like, oh, that's just a disease of slaves. It's yeah, because it's like, because it wasn't affecting them firsthand, like, you know? Like, I'm sure if all the government officials were sick with mesothelioma, they'd be like, oh, no, no. Oh, exactly. And you know, sure, if the president of the United States had the mesothelioma, we would care about it. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, and that I'm not talking about Joe Biden specifically. I'm talking <laughs> about all presidents. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we're talking. We're not talking about anybody specifically, but it's just like a broad thing. Like, it's upsetting. It is upsetting. So to me, asbestos is a sad, long story, but it's not something as a residential homeowner. I'm going to panic about. Yeah, even, exactly. even if it's in my home. So if you're buying a home, not really anything to worry about. Unless, unless you're, you're going to do renovations. Yeah, exactly. Then maybe ask questions or get a specific inspector to come look at it. But buy that ventilator that probably no one can find because of COVID right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The kind of like yeah, the two like the big masks ones. on the side, yeah, like the yeah. two things on the yeah. It has a name, but clearly yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Right. <laughs> Is it time for credits? It's time for credits. So the intro was a video called The Impact of Asbestos by WorkSafe British Columbia, because remember Canada has a lot of asbestos yes, yes, problems yes. too. The music credit is Kevin McLeod of Incontech. Our source credit is asbestos.com. Oh, wow. Look at which that. is part of the mesothelioma. 
what? mesothelial mesothelioma uh, foundation so oh, okay. um, there's a lot if you search history of asbestos it all comes from that yeah um just because they're trying to expose mm -hmm. everything they should they should they should as they should Check us out on YouTube at Eight Action Home Inspection Group Houston, on Facebook, and on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and if you hip, on TikTok at Houston Home Inspector. Yep. Oh my God, our next topic is a big one. It's lead. 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 Ooh. Okay, I'm excited. Do you have a lead spot in your hand from like getting stuck? No, I actually pencil? don't. I've seen some. I saw something about that on Twitter the yeah. other day. Someone was like, I used to have a little piece of lead stuck in my hand. That's scary. <laughs> my stepfather did. He oh, died at 73 years old with a piece of lead stuck in his hand from when a girl in elementary school stabbed him with a pencil for being a dick. That's insane that it just like stays in there. <laughs> and that honestly has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about next yeah, episode, but it's just funny. It's just a funny thing that happens, yeah. <laughs> On that note, I'm Mary. And I'm Lacey. And we're the homegirls, and we will talk to you next time about lead. Yep. Yeah. Let's do it. See you then. Or talk to you then. Yep. <laughs> Oh, mom said our video cut off on Facebook.